My, my, my. Y'all can return to your seats. Be seated if you need to. I don't know about you, but it feels good in here, don't it? I'm thankful we've got the new songs, because I'll tell you what, you can run and shout on those, but I'm thankful for the old songs, too. My goodness. We welcome every uh, guest here tonight. We don't believe you could go anywhere else and be more wanted and welcome than you are here. That's all right. Go ahead. Yes, indeed. We're thankful to have you with us, and uh, we're just thankful to be in church on Tuesday night. I believe I've seen um, Brother Colby Frederick. We're glad you're here tonight. Thank you for being here with us, full-time evangelist. Brother Eric, we're glad you're here. Thank you for being here with us tonight. And y'all worship with this praise team, and let's have church in Jesus' name. And you believe it's in your praise. Yeah. Victory's in your praise. Hallelujah. You going to worship with this praise team?
after last night you know what I told this man before he started singing this song tonight I said anybody can praise because something happened you can praise because you got the raise you can praise because things are going good you can praise because this good thing happened but it's when you praise in spite of something it's when you praise in spite of not getting the raise it's when you praise when everything's going wrong. It's when you praise when nothing's going right. That's your praise. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. No matter what. That has been that in me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Now that is within. And all that is within. Bless, 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 bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. And all that is within. That has been in me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. And all that is within. Sing it out. 
seats and remain standing. Jesus. If it feels good, say amen. Ooh. While you're in that feeling good vein, if it feels so good, just reach right around and prepare your pocketbook. We've come time for perhaps the most spiritual aspect of our service here. Why don't we just stretch our hands toward this need? God, you know all things. Have your way, Lord. Do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus, God. We believe you, Lord. We trust you, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If I could get some ushers to come help me tonight. Look at, boy, they was ready. We opened the gate and they came running. We want to give you an opportunity to be blessed. How many of you have been enjoying Pastor's series on More Than Enough? I was sharing some things with somebody I work with today, as a matter of fact, and I said, you know, the world has such a twisted view on their finances. And I said, man, if you want to know how God intended for finances to be, you ought to tune in to what our pastor's been teaching on Tuesday nights the last few weeks. Because my Lord, that's a revelation the world needs to get a hold of. You hear me? We want to give you an opportunity to be blessed. Prepare your tithes and offering. Let's pray over this in Jesus' name. God, we love you, Lord, and we ask you to bless this tithe and the offering. God, bless the gift and the giver alike. In Jesus' name, you may bring your tithes and offering at this time and worship with Sister Nile as she sings.
turn to your seats and remain standing. One thing I love about this church is there's always the perfect balance of worship and the Word. We can worship and, and burn the aisles up running, but there comes time when God just needs to speak to His people. And I believe the man of God we have tonight, he, uh, he ministered to us greatly the last time he was here. I called Brother Foresight the next morning. I said, how many people have you had called you to put offers in on land this morning? And uh, he laughed, but I still, the blessing is in the deep. My Lord, brother, that touched our hearts. And I'm just, I'm excited. When they said you were coming back, it just fired me up. Brother Brewer, why don't you come and preach to us, man? Share what's on your heart. Come on, why don't we clap our hands unto Jesus? Come on, give him the best praise you've given him all night. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And I appreciate his presence, his power that we can feel. Amen. There is nothing in this world that can compare to being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And the best way to get into his presence is to come to his house and to lift up his name. Amen. You made the right choice tonight by getting ready and coming to his house. Hallelujah. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've already been rewarded for coming. Amen. All of this anointed worship and anointed singing. Amen. Aren't you blessed with great singers and musicians? Amen. That usher us into the presence of the Lord. And I give honor to your great pastor, Pastor Copeland. Amen. Appreciate him so much. He is so kingdom minded. And what a great work of God that he is doing. Amen. I appreciate his family. Uh, he is one of the finest pastors in all of Pentecost, I can tell you that. Amen. A very talented and anointed man of God. When I think of him, I think of the one that received the five talents. And then he took those talents and he multiplied them many times over. Amen. I appreciate him, him entrusting me to stand before you tonight and I don't take it lightly Amen. thank you to Sister Copeland for the wonderful basket Amen. and thank you to Brother Matt and Brother Dylan for your kindness don't we appreciate the entire Copeland family and if you will turn with me in your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17, be reading at verse number 22. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 22. If you found it, shout amen. amen. The Bible says, And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words and David heard them. And all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. 
For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Amen. And with the help of the Holy Ghost and with your help here tonight, I want to preach to you from this thought. Is there not a cause? Amen. I'm here to tell you we've got the greatest cause in all of the world. Amen. This truth is worth fighting for. This is worth defending. Amen. If it's appropriate, you find someone standing next to you and join together. Let's have a prayer meeting. Amen. Asking the Holy Ghost to have his way. Can you do that? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we need you, God. Come on, that's the way to cry out to him. Amen, we need his touch here tonight. We need the Holy Ghost to show up and to move and to speak to our hearts. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, why don't you clap your hands one more time. Man, you may be seated. You know, life is really just one big battlefield and everything about life is a fight and a struggle and so if we got problems tonight if we are going through trials and situations uh, we don't need to be discouraged and we don't need to be disheartened amen it's just a part of living life I mean you don't have to feel like the one sitting across from you never has any problems. Let me just tell you, everybody's got their fair share of problems. Amen. The Bible tells us a man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Amen. And it's just part of living life to go through things and to have problems. When you get up in the morning and you go to your job, you'll be doing your part to engage in the battle of life. You'll be doing your part to fend off or to fight off poverty that wants to come in and take every possession that you have. When you go to work, you're keeping the mortgage company from coming and repossessing your home. You're keeping the landlord from giving you an eviction notice. You're keeping your lights burning. You're keeping the water on. I mean, you're keeping the gas on. You're putting food on the table for your children. And just because you get tired of the battle, and you get tired of the routine, so you decide you want to take a few days off, I mean, guess what never takes a few days off? Is the bills and the problems and the struggles of life. Amen. If you're going to have prosperity, you must learn to constantly stay engaged in the battle against poverty. I mean, this is just a principle of life. The same would apply to a beautifully landscaped yard. I mean, you can go and you can buy the best soil. You can buy super soil and put it in your yard and, and go and get zoysia grass and plant zoysia grass. And you can get shrubs and strategically plant them all throughout your yard and, and put the flowers in all of the right places. Amen. And just as soon as you get done with that, you know what will begin to move in? Is the weeds and the bugs and the worms that will come and try to destroy everything that you've worked so hard to create. Now, well, can I get an amen? We got anybody ever had to pick any weeds out of their flower bed? Amen. Isn't it amazing that you don't have to do anything to get the weeds to grow? Amen. They'll just grow up and take over. And it's the same if you were going to have a vegetable garden. I mean, you can plant all the, the right plants and, and get them in a perfect straight row. And, then, and the weeds will come in and try to choke it out. And we live tonight, and thank God for it, we live in the freest nation in all of the world, the United States of America. Amen. Thank God for it. But I can tell you, Although we're free tonight, I can assure you that tyranny is never very far away. 
I mean, the very moment that we fail to go on offense against threats, the very moment that we quit defending this country is the very moment that tyranny will come in and steal away our great freedom. Amen. And thank God for our freedoms that we enjoy, mainly the freedom to assemble together and worship Almighty God. But it's a sad day in our country to me as we watch many of our own citizens show their dislike and their distaste for this country. It sickens me to watch as people desecrate the flag and and show their hatred for a country that is so wonderful and so great. And I heard a brilliant philosopher recently say, he said if he had one fault to pick with Americans, that it would be that they have not traveled enough. Meaning they hadn't went outside of the continental United States enough. Because if you went to a few other countries, you'd quickly get an education and a, a revelation of just how blessed we are here in America. Amen. And let me just tell you, you're blessed to be in this local church. Amen. It's not every church that has a move of God. It's not every church that has a pastor that will stand for truth. Amen. It's not every church that's a praying church. Hey, your, your leadership eats, sleeps, and breathes this church. You're a very best, blessed people. I mean, if you're thankful for your leadership, why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord? Amen. But we're blessed to be in this country. I mean, is this all right just to talk about the goodness of the Lord for just a few minutes? Amen. If you don't believe it, you go to Brazil. I'm sure Brother Alviar has been through here. You've seen the pictures. Go to Brazil. Go to Ethiopia. Go to India. Go to uh, Europe. I know a lot of people aspire to want to be like the Europeans, but I'm going to tell you, they've been dealing with high inflation for many, many years. You can go over there and get you a piece of pizza that's about as thin as a sheet of paper with a little bit of tomato sauce and a little bit of cheese, you can get you that and a bottle of Coke for $25. They've been dealing with high gas prices for 30 years, maybe longer. <clears throat> so much so that it's pushed most people into public transportation. And if they're not on that, they, if they do have a car, it's extremely small. Or maybe they would have a bike or a moped. And if, if I were to ask for a show of hands here tonight of those of us that would identify ourselves as wealthy, perhaps none of us would raise our hand. Because our definition of wealth is with an American perspective. And we would probably, none of us, say that we're wealthy. But when you stop for a moment and consider and, and understand that two-thirds of the world does not have running water I mean, I think we'd all reevaluate we're wealthier than we think we are. <clears throat> but it's sad to me as we watch our country's representatives cave on issue after issue. They've lost their zeal to stand for what's right. Almost all of my life I've watched representatives uh, run on the notion that the social issues don't really matter. If abortion is not going to affect you. If you don't believe in abortion, just don't have an abortion. Uh, Same-sex marriage is not going to hurt you. And they're all, they were always giving up ground, always backing up. And so people believed them, and, and they were elected. They said, when we, what matters is the economy. And that's what directly affects you, is how much money is in your wallet. And so they convinced people to elect them, and really people should have known that they wouldn't do right by our money I mean, when they wouldn't do right by an unborn child's life. Amen. But my concern here tonight is not the political battle that we're in, but my concern here tonight is the spiritual battle that every one of us is engaged in tonight. Amen. 
Our adversary wants to destroy every good thing that God has planted in your life. I mean, he wants to eat away at every beautiful thing. He would love to destroy your marriage, destroy your children, and destroy your home. I mean, and steal away your finances. I mean, convince you that it's not all that important to pay your tithes, to give your offering. But let me tell you, you can never become complacent in this battle. You can't take a break from the spiritual battle that we're all in tonight. Amen. You can't let the enemy set the rules of engagement. Amen. But you've got to roll up your sleeves and you've got to become engaged in the battle. And we see this with Saul and the men of Israel as they're set in battle against the Philistines. And this so-called champion named Goliath comes up for the 40th time, putting fear in the hearts of God's people. And the Bible says that Saul was greatly afraid. Think about that. The most powerful military to ever exist is shaking in their boots with fear, intimidated by this giant. And no military had ever seen the great victories that they had seen. No military had ever seen the Red Sea roll back. And the Jordan River roll back and the Jericho walls fall flat. Amen. And so we see where Jesse sends David to check on his brothers and bring them some provisions. And while he's there again, Goliath comes up, amen, and antagonizing God's people. And David hears this giant. And while he's standing there, there's some men gathered together and they're telling of the reward for killing this giant. And as David hears what the reward is, must have sounded too good to be true, he had them repeat it. He said, what, what again is that reward for killing the giant? He said, well, if you kill this giant, you're going to get to marry the king's daughter. He's going to make your house free in Israel. You won't have to pay any taxes. And he'll enrich you with great riches. I mean, I just believe that something began to stir up in the heart of David. I mean, I know we live in a world and in a society that teaches people, I mean, that you don't have to slay the giant to get the reward. But let me just tell you, in the real world, if you're going to receive the reward, you've got to be willing to face the giant. I mean, you've got to be willing to face down the enemy. I mean, I know that we live in a different day now, and they teach differently that everybody should get the reward. But... But that's not the way that it really is. I mean, you've got to be willing to face the giant. And you don't need to let anybody make you feel guilty for wanting the reward for killing the giant. Hey, if you kill the giant, you ought to get the reward. Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto the Lord. I mean, this may have been David's first big financial breakover. I'm sure it was. Think about how far ahead you could get in life if you didn't have to pay any taxes. Amen. But David is there and he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? Well, I wish that could get in everybody's spirit in this house. Amen. Stop just sitting back and letting the devil have his way. But something ought to rise up in our spirit. It says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Hey, we are the people of God. God is for us. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that Eliab, his older brother, began to mock his faith. And isn't it amazing that every time you start to do something for the Lord, there's always somebody that wants to come around and criticize and demean you. Amen. There's always somebody to criticize your faith. And Eliab begins to ask him, why are you even here? And where are your few sheep? I know the naughtiness of your heart. I know about your past, David. I know about some of your failures and faults. Amen. But David answered him and said, what have I done? Amen. And he posed this question to him. Is there not a cause? Amen. Let me tell you, we got something that's worth fighting for. Hey, we've got a great cause. 
Our families are worth fighting for. Our children are worth fighting for. Hey, this community is worth fighting for. Amen. There's still people that need to receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. There's still people that need to be baptized in Jesus' name and set free from sin. Hey, we've got a great cause. This is something worth fighting for. Hey, revival's worth fighting for. I hope you get a fight in your spirit before this night's over. Revival's worth fighting for. Hey, why are you going to church again? Because we've got a cause. Why are you fasting again? Because we've got a great cause. Why are you going to prayer meeting again? Because we've got a great cause. Why are you paying your tithes again? Because we've got a great cause. Hallelujah, I don't feel like letting the devil ravage my home and have his way in my family, but I feel like pushing back against the devil. I feel like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy. I feel like going to another red-hot prayer meeting. Hallelujah, hey, I'm not going to always be on defense. I think it's time that God's people go on offense, that we take some new territory from the devil. Well, if you believe that, clap your hands under the Lord. And we'll tell you, preserving this truth to another generation is a fight worth fighting. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I've got a rich heritage in truth. I had a, a grandmother and a grandfather, amen, went through many battles to preserve this truth for me. Amen. Fought many battles. Amen. Preserving this truth and having church in, on sawdust floors and I mean, having tomatoes thrown out of them, at them and being made fun of and all the different hardships that they endured. Didn't have any money. My grandfather, I mean, as a young preacher, had a two-year-old son that he lost. His two-year-old son died. And not long after that, his wife died from tuberculosis. And on the way to bury her, he was riding her body was on a train heading back, I believe, to Mississippi, and he was in his truck that he had turned into a little uh, makeshift camper, and while he's riding to the funeral, his camper throws a rod, motor blows up, he's stuck on the side of the road for several days, and he comes to North Little Rock, Arkansas, and, and takes over a church, and in the process, went through many battles, had to dismantle a church board that wanted to run the church. And the many, many battles that have been fought. I think of your pastor, all of the battles that he's fought. I mean, we're in a beautiful sanctuary tonight, but if you're a visitor or a guest, let me tell you, it hadn't always looked like this. It hadn't always been a house full of people. If I'm remembering right, I think he told me 38 people or so when he started. Hey Amen. Look at the crowd tonight. But it's, it's been a lot of battles that's been fought. Hey Amen. And when I think about all of those battles and then think that I would come along, and this truth has been handed to me. It's been handed to me by scarred up hands and people that fought many battles. They didn't water this down for me. But they handed me this truth in its truest form and in its purest form. And to think that when I feel a little pressure when I'm at the mall that I would cave on this truth because I feel a little out of place because of the way that I'm dressed. Hey, the least that I can do is just preserve what's been given to me. The least that I can do is hand this off to my children in the way that it was given to me. Hey, I don't want to water down the message. I don't want to let the world begin to creep in Amen, because I'm consumed with my own pleasures. Hey, I owe it to my children. I owe it to my babies to hand them what's been given to me. Man, I know that we live in some challenging times. Man, the, the day of the internet, evil is on every hand. Amen, to the likes of which we've never seen before. Basically, anything you can conjure up in your mind, it's available and accessible from your cell phone. And, of course, drugs are 
that's the true pandemic or epidemic is drug use. Uh, the way it has destroyed so many lives. So I understand tonight that we have great challenges. Amen. But let me tell you, you don't have to live with a giant in your life. You can slay the giant by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't care if you're addicted to drugs. I don't care if you're addicted to pornography. I don't care if you're addicted to alcohol or cigarettes. I don't care if you're battling depression. Let me tell you, the power of the Holy Ghost can break every chain. It can set you free. Hey, let me tell you, the deliverer is in the house tonight to set free the captive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I remember one day I was having a conversation with some brothers. And as we were talking, we began to talk about people that we knew that were so bound on hardcore drugs like meth, crystal meth and fentanyl and all these things. We began to talk about that, how you could, you, you could understand, you could see that they wanted to be free. They wanted to be set free from uh, these chains of sin that had them bound, but it just seemed like whatever they tried to do, they could not get free. And as we were talking, one of the men said, you know what, I can't think of one person that ever got off drugs and stayed off drugs. Which I couldn't really believe that he would even say that. Because I knew several people. But, but it did bother me. It did burden me to see, to see so many people that they want to be free from sin. But they, they just can't get free. And so I left that conversation and went to the church and, and was praying and praying with this burden. I mean, as I was praying, I began to ask the Lord, why does it seem like there's people that truly want to be free from sin, but they, they just can't get free? They just can't break the chains. And as I was praying, I feel like the Lord quickened back to me. It's a very simple thought, but I believe it was the Holy Ghost that quickened back to me and said, I've, I've got deliverance for them. <clears throat> but it's one day at a time deliverance. See, what we want is we want to walk down to this front. We want Pastor Copeland to lay his hand on our head. And after he prays for us, we become angelic. And we never want to do anything wrong again. I mean, we never are tempted again. We never have another battle again. We never struggle with our flesh again. Amen. But let me tell you, as long as you're in this flesh, you're going to have to battle the flesh. So let me tell you what you do is you get that day-by-day -day victory. You know how you get day-by-day -day victory? It's tomorrow morning when you wake up. I mean, you come by this church and you pray until you pray in the Holy Ghost. Until the Holy Ghost begins to speak through you. I mean, and you know what you'll have? You'll have victory for Monday. But you know what you'll have to do on Tuesday? Tuesday, you'll have to do it all over again. You'll have to come to this house. Amen. And pray till you pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, the power of the Holy Ghost can break every chain. Amen. You just got to make it a point every day of my life. I'm going to pray till I pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. My bishop always says this. He says, you can't smoke a cigarette and talk in tongues at the same time. Hey, you get full enough of this Holy Ghost, I don't care what you're battling. I mean, you'll be able to win the battle. The, the Holy Ghost will deliver you. Hey, Amen. The chain breaker's in the house tonight. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. You know what you got to do? You got to make up your mind. I'm going to tell you, there's power in a made-up mind. Hey Amen. you are to leave this house. If you hadn't made your mind up tonight, you are to leave here with a made-up mind. Hey Amen. the Bible tells us, Daniel, the first chapter, and the eighth verse says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. 
Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I mean, young people, you need to make up your mind. I'm not going to defile myself. Amen. With the pleasures of this world. Amen. You read that over in another translation. It says it this way. It says, but Daniel made up his mind. Hey, somebody needs to make up their mind. Hey, I'm not going to defile myself. I'm going to stay pure before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. It, it matters how we see ourselves. I mean, it matters how we see ourselves. The Bible tells us in Numbers, the 13th chapter, this is where Moses has sent spies to spy out the land of Canaan. And listen to the report that's brought back. Numbers chapter 13, verse number 26 says, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel under the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Listen to their report. It says, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Amen. And Caleb, the Bible says, he stilled the people. He said, hang on just a minute. Amen. We need some, somebody to get a spirit of Caleb in this house. <clears throat> Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once, amen, for the land, for the people that we see, inhabitants thereof, are the, saw in it are great stature. And we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I mean, you see the report that is brought back from these men. This, the Bible called it an evil report. They said, you know what? I'm just a grasshopper. I mean, what could I ever do for the Lord? I'm no great singer. I'm no great musician. I can't preach. I and mean, I don't have any money. I can barely pay my bills. I mean, how would I ever be able to bless the kingdom of God financially? I mean, I'm, I'm just a grasshopper. I mean, this is the spirit that the enemy wants to get a hold of the church. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if God be for you, who can be against you? God doesn't need you to be super talented. Amen. He's going to do the work anyway. He's just looking for somebody that will walk out and take a step of faith. Hallelujah. God's looking for somebody that's got a little faith in their spirit tonight. Amen. Somebody that's willing to go out and face the giants of the land. Hey, the milk and the honey, it's there. He's just looking for somebody that'll take a step of faith. Amen. And isn't it amazing how God makes us take a step? Amen. How God makes us go out and face the giant. Amen. God didn't need David to kill Goliath. Amen. He could have reached down from heaven, amen, and thumped Goliath between his eyes. I mean, he didn't need Moses to stretch out that rod over that Red Sea. Amen. It was God that rolled back those waters, but he used Moses to stretch out that rod. Amen. It wasn't Joshua and his shout that caused those walls to fall, but God used that. I mean, it's amazing how God will use the mediocre things to do miraculous things. Amen. How he'll use four lepers to bring about a great military victory. Amen. These four bony lepers just began to walk toward that enemy camp. Amen. Now these were sick men. These were men, not only were they sick, they were starving to death. Amen. But you know what? They, they got something in their spirit. They said, why just sit here until we die? Why just sit here and do nothing? Amen. And they just decided, you know what? Let's just make a move and see if God won't work for us and see if God won't fight for us. Amen. They began to walk toward that enemy camp. Amen. I believe that the steps that they were taking 
probably didn't feel like great steps. I don't think the ground was shaking when they were walking as they began to walk. I mean, but what they didn't know is on the other end, I mean, God had those enemy tent flaps flapping in the wind as he was working on the other end. Let me tell you, even when you can't see it, he's working. God's moving. You just keep on walking. You just keep on going in faith. You just keep on believing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The musicians can come. Hallelujah. You just got to take that step of faith. Amen. The Bible tells us that those Syrians began to get afraid. Amen. They began to be filled with paranoia. Said, you know what? They're coming to destroy us. They've hired the Egyptians and the Hittites to overtake us. Amen. And fear gripped their heart. And they decided they wanted to run for their lives. Amen. And here come these four lepers as they walk into those tents. Amen. The Bible tells us they walked in, amen, to silver and gold and great blessings. Let me tell you, God's got great blessings for everybody in this house tonight. Amen. But you've got to be willing to take a step of faith. You've got to be willing to face the giant. You can stand with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I believe we've got some giant killers in the house tonight. Amen. I believe we've got some giant killers. If you'll just step out in faith and be willing to face that giant. Amen. You don't need to be afraid to start that new business. God's going to help you. You just got to go at it in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't need to be afraid to buy that land. God's going to bless it. God's going to be with you. Amen. You just got to be willing to take that step. Amen. Nobody can do that part for you. You got to be willing to walk toward the enemy camp. Amen. Come on down toward this front. Amen. If, if you don't have the infilling of the Holy Ghost, tonight would be a good night to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. Let's, the singers begin to sing. Amen. Let's begin to pray all over this house. Amen. God's got great victory for this church. God's got greater things in store for this church. He's not finished yet. Amen. You just got to believe. You've got to grasp a hold of faith. Hallelujah. You've got to grasp a hold of faith. Hallelujah. Our God is in control. He's on the throne tonight. Come on. Why don't you find somebody to join up with and pray? Let's have a prayer meeting all across this house. Amen. If you need deliverance, let me tell you the deliverer is in the house. Amen. He's here to set the captive free. Hallelujah, he's here to set the captive free. Hallelujah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Come on, find somebody to pray with. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost wants to do a work. Hey, you don't have to live enslaved by a giant. And the power of the Holy Ghost can make you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is power. Come on, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is power. Come on, there's power to set free. You don't have to live bound to sin. You don't have to live enslaved to drugs. Hallelujah. You don't have to live enslaved to pornography. And the Holy Ghost can set you free. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's keep praying. There's people seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord is doing a work here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find somebody to pray for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain.
still moving. I believe God sent this man to preach this word to us tonight. And I'm telling you, it's, it stirred something inside of me. Last night, he, he was talking about taking territory. And I believe that for a long time in this part of this area, Shoba County over in this way, I believe that the church at large has begun to take territory. And I'll tell you what, I believe a piece of territory was claimed over at East Central Community College last night. And I'm telling you right now, I believe with every fiber of my being that we haven't seen the last of that. We're about to see miracles, signs, and wonders come from what happened and what's begun out of this church. Let's push, let's ask God one more time. Let's give God everything we have. I believe there's some things that have got to break some chains that we'll be taking off of some situations tonight. There's deliverance in this room. There's healing in this room. Why don't we press one more time? There are needs all over this house. Why don't we press one more time? Let's take some spiritual territory in this place tonight. Let God have his way. In the name of Jesus. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Why don't we lift our hands together? Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our midst tonight, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. I believe God had a divine word for this church tonight and he sent Brother Brewer to deliver it to us and I'm telling you I believe we're going to hear testimonies about things that God did in this service tonight God's still working in the name of Jesus don't forget family prayer tomorrow night I believe Brother Brewer will be ministering to us again and I'm excited about it. how many of you are thankful for the ministry of Brother Brewer We appreciate him being with us tonight. I look forward to tomorrow night. If you're praying, continue to pray. You can be dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you.